lady is going to sit. And away we go. So, Derek, give us the game. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, I, with with all the um, people in the call, I've shared this project. So it's um, you know, probably probably just heard it. Um, my challenge is um, to develop a market intelligence capability um, that is hopefully that's hopeful, very hopeful, because it can provide a lot of um, useful and purposeful information for the client, which is um, an education institute in the vet sector. And um, the challenge is that functional areas probably don't see eye to eye on a few of these things. Um, so needing to organize them in a certain fashion to extract um, info, knowledge that they that they they have or harvest through the partnerships, through industry partnerships. Um, so yeah, I guess the, the biggest challenge or priority up front is what does that look like practically in terms of who's involved in the sort of human sensor network where we extract this information, um, how it's captured, who pushes that information out to the organization. Um, yeah, I might, I might just start there. All right, so for my clarification, clarifying questions in general, throw them at us. Um, so if I get, you're trying to create a human sensor network and within some organizational context or just a, uh, okay, so there is like a bubble around these people that they're sort of, in. Yep. okay. Um, and the, is, is the purpose just the creation of the network or are you trying to to do something in particular uh, around the sensing, I would imagine? Yep. Um, so that information will be used for um, things like product development in, in terms of the courses that this client will keep on scope or get rid of or in some ways want to improve um, based on the feedback, based on... Um, maybe changes in relevancy for a particular course because it's the vet sector. Um, that's that's the purpose. Decision-making, essentially, yeah. Okay. Anybody else clarifying questions? Uh, yes. Um, so it is for, for feedback. Do I understand this correctly? Um, in terms of what are my needs uh, as a... As a um, as a vet um, training participant. That's great. Yeah, so it's, sorry, it's probably a little bit more than that. So it is the, the student, definitely the student um, experience. It's also the industry partner experience. So for example, um, in the nursing field, if someone needs to do a traineeship, so it's that kind of um, feedback from the industry partner, but also the feedback from the student in working within as a trainee with that industry partner. Also, I guess another aspect of the market intelligence is the, the desktop research or the white papers, all that as inputs as well. So it's the human and the, um, yeah, the other data around, around us that's accessible. Is that, does that clarify that question for you, Nicole? Who is supposed to use this application to get insights? <laughs> that is up for debate. That's part of the um, the question is at what layer of the organization um, is this information being used? And I think that's yeah, a really poignant question in trying to understand who the audience is. Um, definitely the executive branch will be using this information to make calls on courses um, that may be one of the areas is when they go through the process of deciding what is on scope or off scope, that might be one aspect. Um, and even just seeking opportunities that we can move into a particular market and develop new courses. Um, so it's, let's, let's start maybe with the executive branch. Is it for your organization to learn and to study what the need of the market is? Yes. Yeah. And I'm, and so what comes up for me that I'm still sort of squishy on is what's, um, like, what is the thing that you're hoping to get advice on 
hear from this group? Like, is it about yeah. setting up of the this center network or because there's a couple different things that seem a little squishy? Sure. Um, the, yeah, the first one would probably be the, the setting up, um, what that would look like, because it would sit in my mind, it sits across various functional areas. Um, uh, I mean, I mentioned this to the group, they don't necessarily see eye to eye on certain things. They don't see the value in sharing perhaps some of the information that they get from an industry partner. Um, it may also be a protection um, mechanism where they don't want to share because of the power or um, yeah influence they have in that particular connection or relationship. Um, so that's one aspect is the setting up of this. What what does that actually look like? Well, what could it look like? Um, then there's the, I guess, like a, a racy chart, like the actual physical roles and responsibilities around that. What does that look like? Um, what are the inputs? Like what sort of data sources are we talking about that would be useful for this um, capability? And then um, how that feeds up in a nice succinct package for the executive branch to then use and make decisions on. Does that clarify that question for you, Jeremy? Not really. Big question. Sounds like it's a big question. We got a lot, mm -hmm. lot of yeah. And yeah. does anybody yeah. else have additional clarifying questions? I think I do. Um, so just, just um, is it how, how, from a time frame perspective, how long would this project be? How much have I got left to deliver it? Did you mean? Mm. Also, or what? What? Yeah. Um, I, th I guess um, it's it's been on the radar for quite some time. So there there is a um, I guess you say a sense of urgency to try and close this out. So there there is definitely um, buying to some degree from some of the executive branch that are trying to push this through. Um, because they do want, yeah, they want information that's accurate, timely, useful, um, and relevant. So um, time, in terms of timelines, pretty urgent. So you're, you're creating um, permanent structure that's going to be implemented in the future? Correct. And that structure, yes. is, is, that structure is going to be... Um, like a working group of something or a system of, of something? It could be a working group. It could be, um, yeah, definitely. It could, could be any of those things. Yeah, it, it's a blank canvas. No, nothing exists in an ordered capability fashion right now. And I think that's part of the, the confusing aspect of it. There's no preconceived uh, structure or what, what that might look like. And and one more question: Are you working with how many people are in your team, or who are in who's in your team? It's a, it's a really big team. It's it's me. <laughs> it's just me. Okay, and then the one other thing that I I'm trying to get some clarification on. So you mentioned sort of vets um, as a subgroup. Are those the people receiving the training? The trainings that you're. Um, to? Maybe I'll just clarify vet in terms of um, vocational education because I think in the states vet means veteran. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So um, vocational edu vocational education training. So it's the um, basically apprenticeships, traineeships in trades, um, health, um, early childhood education, teachers. That they're the sort of courses that we deliver. Okay. So then yeah. it sounds like in terms of you've got the trainees that are sort of receiving these trainings, you've got the trainers, and then you've got some additional organization that's stitching these two, these things together. And that, okay, now yeah. I think I understand the question about our different subgroups. Is there a different subgroup in there? And that looks like Nicole's got a question. Um, no, I think that's pretty much it. You've got the students, you've got the teachers, and maybe the industry partner, if, if there's um, an apprenticeship that's delivered on the job, let's say, and then there's basically corporate that sits above all that, that organizes the courses and the costs and all the rest of it. I wonder what the what the main main customer is, um, and if it were HR in a corporation, 
um, that were to buy that offers that you would present or put together, um, then I wonder what's their insight when they come from a specific sector and get insights from another sector. So how big of a data set would you have in terms of insights um, when you go cross sector because vet training is very specific uh, in specific sectors, but also in sub sectors. Um, so is the question around, could, could you maybe repeat that, Nicole? Yes. Um, how useful is the data insights your main customer gets um, in terms of if you have cross sectors that you offer? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Um, uh, well, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of like a um, two way um, conversation in terms of so say for example a student may a new student may come to us not knowing um, what they want to do but with their life they want some career advice for example we would then leverage say an industry partnership and say industry or like local council or government say. Where, where's the skills gap or where are their jobs at the moment um, and look for, for, for gaps there that we know there is a pipeline to actually provide a job a job outcome because that's what everyone wants essentially. Um, so that, that's one element. Then there's the, um, the element of the industry partner that wants you know the current the currency it's called currency in, in the teacher. Um, so they want to know, what the currency is for our teachers, what infrastructure we have in terms of the new latest and greatest welding machines or what have you. Um, so there's that that part as well. Um, so that, yeah, I think I think in terms of um, what they could get, it, it's kind of that collaboration piece. They can both leverage that um, that market intelligence if it's if it's done correctly. Mm -hmm. So um, I think this gives us a meaningful amount of surface area to at least have a conversation about what we might uh, offer Derek in terms of advice. Derek, what I'll invite you to do is turn off your webcam and mute yourself, but importantly, listen while we're going to have a conversation about your situation. Cool. And I will put down, I'll give us an initial time box of 10 minutes, just so we don't blather forever. Um, so like I said, typically I, I, I try to focus on what are the liberating structures that we, we might offer to Derek to help him gain clarity around this stuff. But I mean, you're the wise crowd. What comes to mind for you guys when you hear Derek's story and situation? In terms of liberating structure or in terms of content? Yes. Are there any structures that come to mind that we might give we, we might advise or do we, does anybody have a, a story or an anecdote about a, a similar type of situationally thing that they recognize? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I really I wish I would have listened to the first part of it. I was kind of just sneaking in, but I think that's how I understand it. Please stop me if I understand it understood it wrong. But so if a student comes in and they don't really know what they want, but I, I say I want to do something with my hands and I really like to work with people. So then they would offer me, hey, why don't you become a therapist? So then I need a teacher and a space and then maybe I need some money and to, to afford this class and there's a certain amount of time. And so there's many different factors that come into play that need to work for me so that I say, yes, I want to do this training so that the teach something and the space and ultimately the end client and so for this um, my question to Derek would be if this is correct like this I'm wondering how do you choose to present the person that doesn't know what they want possible scenarios like possible doors of why don't you enter this or this or this door like what is the how do you select the field for them if they just say I don't know what to do but something good and 
then, yeah, this is, I think, for now, the question. Cool, thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Um, I think um, uh, sometimes it, 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 it helps me when, when I try to like, clarify what is really the purpose and 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 what are what are like the uh the main customers um how could the structure look like um to to map this out um and this could be like looking at uh what so what now what to try to move through this but there are other structures that could be adapted to to think that out loud um on your own like an adaption of purpose to practice maybe or or others so um because I, I um what, what was uh difficult for me to understand um is actually who profits from this application in what and why um and um uh, for whom is this data useful and for whom not? And um, so it's like something to how to map it out and how to pin it, because I think, um, yeah, you probably know about this quite a bit, but sometimes it helps to map it out. Yeah, I was, I was also thinking about the, um, like what came to my mind was also purpose to practice somehow, but I don't I don't know how to, to, to visualize it yet. Um, but it's it's also uh, what what strikes me here is that he's all alone, and um, the end result is going to be something that involves probably most likely involves more people. So um, there's going to be, I think, one significant part of the work is this engagement with lots of actors to figure out a structure, how to permanently involve them, <laughs> or, or, or I don't know exactly how to how that will play out. But um, this thing from one person's mind to a lot of people's practice, I think it seems like one of the challenges of this work. Um, it's just a thought that came into my mind, Paula, when you were speaking. So if he's on his own, it's probably good to know the must do's. Um, and so maybe it, it could help to, to, to use min specs as a, as a loose structure to ponder about what are really like the, the must do's that I need to do because I'm all on my own um, that I can really handle and then whom I need to add to the, to the group. like a riff of must-do's like if, if you have to do it on your own. That seems super sage. I'm trying to grab this visual for purpose to practice so we can give some more surface area on this particular structure. Barry and Christian just made a nice visual um, for purpose to practice, which is apparently too large to fit on this document, which makes me mad. <laughs> okay. Um, purpose to practice um, is, is always a really good idea to, to build on that, uh, especially when we're starting off with a new initiative. So, you know, just to create an artifact that has the, the greatest hits of what the, the essential elements are for your initiative. What's your purpose? What is the thing that you're trying to achieve? Um, what are you, the principles that you need to lean into in order to achieve that purpose? Who are your participants? Like have a, a, a relatively clear descri description of your, um, of your user groups that you're going to need participation from in order to achieve your purpose? What are the, the structures that you might lean into in order to manifest those principles and achieve the purpose? And what are the specific practices? Um, you know, these could be the rituals of your environment. The, um, these might be the cadence of your timing, but the, the moments that you come together as a, as a group. Um, 
each one of those sort of questions around those topics, there's a sort of laundry list of different uh, liberating structures you might use to explore and sort of answer those questions. But I would say that's definitely a good place to start. What also jumped out for me, I really like the idea of min specs. And one thing that might help you sort of do that min specs is, especially in this participation space, when, when you have these relatively clearly defined user groups, is to do some form of what I need from you, specifically on the topic of what I want to get out of it, right? So like if we, if we can sit around, you know, if we've got these trainees, a subgroup of trainees, a subgroup of trainers, a subgroup of these, this coordination organization. You know, if we've got all of these users basically making two requests of each of the other groups going, hey, this would be the information that would be re really help me to make my decisions or, you know, just um, improve my sense making about what I want to do in the in relationship with you guys give those the people that are receiving those requests like just four very simple answers they can either say yes i, I gener generally accept the 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 your request to give you supply with you with such information no like that's that you're asking for something that's too much for me i i i can't give you that or i don't want to um i'll try meaning not ex not exactly in between definitely the squishy or some version of your your request is not clear enough for me to either answer any one of those right go sort of go back to the drawing board i don't get it you know whatever is what they say on the in the book what's important about what i need from you is the is that there's no explanation required for the person giving one of those four responses so um, you, it, it helps us to both articulate clearly what we want, um, to also answer clearly um, to a request um, without having to do the song and dance of justification um, around what our response is for that. So that could be an interesting conversation to be had there. I also think there's something around social network webbing. So Nicole, you were sort of uh, alluding to like visualizing what the stakeholder environment looks like. So just, just, you know, put up a mind map of who's related to who, what's the flow of relationships. And in order to create this sort of uh, human sensor network, who might you want to weave closer together and, you know, develop a, a, a stronger relationship and information sharing. Um, so those are the ones that come immediately to mind. Um, purpose to practice, um, what I need from you, social network webbing, nine whys is obviously sage, especially around that question of purpose. You know, just this inquiry, you know, inviting each one of these different user groups to go, all right, what is it you get out of being in this collaborative uh, ecosystem? Um, so those are the ones that jump out to me in particular. I hope that I've explained them clear enough for you guys and for Derek. Derek, why don't you come back and let us know what you thought of our consultation and we'll go from there. Thanks so much, everyone. Um, and I, I think it may be because it's so early in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I may have missed a very critical point. Is part, I think a big part of it is actually the, the product, like how to how to move on product what new products can we develop as a result of this sort of feedback in in the human sensor network but um things that really stood out for me um so I, I'm, I'm not used um any of those rating structures i'm not familiar with them i'm very new to all this so i'll definitely read up on on the ones that you've mentioned um yeah um i think paula you mentioned the challenge around engagement it's it is very front of mind for me knowing that i'm trying to come up with this uh, a capability and you know that in terms of david teese's work on dynamic capabilities like to have a capability in action you're organizing a lot of people in order to get some kind of output um so that that is going to yeah it definitely is a challenge it needs to be some more collaboration around who will actually be involved 
um, I think I get the idea of what, so what, now what, um, as an approach, I'll have to look into purpose to practice. Um, yeah, I think trying to bed down what the structure might look like in, in some sort of, sort of mind map, which I've started, but maybe these liberating structures will help draw out or extract some better information. Um, yeah, so it's, thank you. Yeah, and like I said, uh, that document here in the Google Docs, I've been taking notes, and there's at least um, descriptions of the structures that came up in our conversation, and so the visuals that I've basically got for explainers on those structures that you can start sort of start with and use that as your like short list to go, okay, of these things, um, which ones are the ones that I think um, would make the most sense to start with? The only one I didn't put down here was min specs. And min specs, I don't think we unpacked in particular. Min specs just says, you know, of the, all the laundry list of things that you can imagine that you would, that you could do in this type of collaborative environment, what are the most essential? You know, and just going through that laundry list and go, you know, if I if I ignored this item right here, could I still be successful in accomplishing our end purpose? And, you know, obviously if the answer is yes, I could ignore it and still be successful, then fuck it, ignore it, right? <laughs> and so just focus on the absolute necessities. Um, cool. Well, that is Wise Crowds in a nutshell. Um, thanks everybody for consulting uh, for Derek. Does anybody else have a, a situation, question or challenge they'd like to throw at the group? Nicole's got one for us. Give it to us. Just wondering if there's anybody else also happy to, to do that sometime else. Um, comes up for anybody else. The floor is yours, my friend. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Um, so I'm currently um, planning, um, so I'm a, I'm a professional facilitator and, and coach and I work with organizations and with teams. And I'm currently planning a, a, a team boost day for um, for a team um, who is um, working in, in the finance department of a, of a large company. Um, and um, I'm currently designing um, the agenda in and going to, in order to, to kind of tailor make this, I'm not only going to talk to the leader, but also to the participants that uh, take take part in this in this whole day. Nonetheless, um, it is always helpful to pick brains outside of that box. Um, so the purpose of this one day is to strengthen the team. The second purpose is to look at how processes and working together can be a better fit for everybody in the team. Um, and also to figure out what is important for the team uh, when it comes to working together. It's a young team that's been working together for a year um, and they've been going to an intense phase of working currently. Um, and so this team boost day really is for them to kind of um, hopefully charge their batteries um, and, and get some more glue um, for, for themselves. And uh, it's, it's a one day um, event um, and um, I will be using liberating structures, but also other um, facilitation techniques. Um, one game will be part of it. Um, and so I'm currently looking for, and this is my request for the group, um, something um, as of a nice warm up, um, uh, something um, for, um, looking back of what they have achieved as a team already um, and something for um, what can really help us to move forward in terms of working well together. Those are my requests. Cool. And clarifying questions. So how many people are in this team or, or in the group? Ten. Ten people. And and there it's just people inside the team, so 
So um, it is. There's a there's a core team in in one uh, uh, geographic location that is seven, and there is three other people who are also linked to that team but do not um, physically uh, work um, in the same geographic location, and they're joining. Okay. So seven people that are that are still collaborators on the team uh, that are remote in some way. And how much time do you have for this team boost day? Uh, it's like a whole day. So we start early in the morning and we finish in the in the afternoon. Cool. And that sounds like it's an on-site thing? It's an on-site, yeah. Yay, no Zoom. Awesome. Not, no, Zoom is fine. I love you guys. So that's, that's, that's that. anyway. Clarifying questions, anybody else? Just, I'm just curious of the other three people, are they in the same geographic location or are they spread out? They uh, are in the same country um, and they are at uh, a couple of hours of travel difference uh, distance to where the main team is located. And do, do they work together? Um, yes. Generally? Yeah. Can I jump in and ask? Um, when you say strength and team, how, what's the underpinning definition of strength in there? Or what, what are the assumptions? Why, why do they need to strengthen the team? Um, there's uh, so far uh, two elements that have come out and maybe also in the calls that I will have, there will be some more things coming out. So, so far, the information that I have is um, that um, they have worked together for a year and there's room for improvement uh, when it comes to collaboration and um, when it comes to, to working together and communication issues, um, uh, but they're not like in a, in a conflict situation, but there's just things that could, that could work better for the team members. And, um, and then also they got through a phase of uh, stress, quite intense uh, work. Um, and so they um, they would need something to kind of charge their batteries, like like in like a day where they re really can like also let go of that stress they had. Um, yeah. So to answer your questions, or like is this already the time for that to go into what she was asking? Um, well, if there's no other clarifying questions, yeah, then that's an answer for me. I, I do have one question around uh, identity, uh, clear, oddly enough. Um, do, like, what's the like gender identity of the group, and and in terms of like shared culture or background? Yeah, good point. Um, so um, uh, there is mainly uh, female identified uh, people in the team. Um, there are two male identified people in the team. Um, the, um, and cultural background, they all speak the same language. Um, so they all come from the same country. That's also maybe important for the cultural background. And um, yeah, that comes up right now. Good, cool, awesome. So you know what to do, Nicole. Get out of here, we'll have a conversation. Um, so what comes up for you guys? I mean, I know Derek as well. You said you don't have much familiarity with liberating structures, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure you know stuff, man. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll jump straight in then. I, the reason I asked around the strengthening question um, is to, I, I'm not sure what liberating structure you use, but I'd, I'd be curious to know how everyone defines strength and is it, is it to become more forceful in the marketplace? Is it to more resilience to understand the underpinnings of what strength and means to the individual um, and in combination with that, if it is strengthened because they feel like they're being stretched, um, I, something like system one, system two, thinking like slowing down to speed up, that kind of thing. So maybe some kind of mindfulness um, 
intervention or practice where people can get a bit more work-life balance into um, their day-to-day. Um, are they resourced properly? Is is there, you know, have they balanced and optimised um, their processes? If not, um, are they growing or scaling too quickly? I've seen that happen plenty of times where, you know, products just going gangbusters and they just can't keep up with demand. So they're just adding in and not really filtering people that maybe they're bringing on board properly. So you can introduce more problems that you're actually then fixing them as a result. Um, again, I wouldn't, I'm not sure what liberating structure you could use to really, you know, zoom in and find or identify um, solutions to that, but that is my broader thinking around that topic. Well, thank you. Anybody else? I'd like to go on the order that you mentioned, Nicole. So you said something about a warm up. Um, I think the best warm up is always something that's very embarrassing. So it's like really, then everything else is going to be easy going from there. So it could be something like dancing expressing something like this could be something really awkward like singing something making a noise and not speaking at all because you said they all speak the same language so either making up a language like and still trying to get a message across or something like this and then moving into something that's then going to seem easy but actually it's not that easy for some people but after this it's going to be easy which is kind of creating as well you said about the middle part is like what is what was achieved so maybe use a a tool Garage band, which is like very simple, and they can uh, song or like speak their their poetry or like just kind of like hold or like capture what has been achieved into like a song that everybody else will listen to these other songs and they can like keep listening to them and like kind of like cherish what they've achieved, and then moving into how to move forward or like what's next could be a nice like scrapbook booking vision board activity like of paper down cutting stuff out painting drawing talking about it and making really nice like pieces that they can take home hang in the office or something like this yeah that's what i saw i don't know if it makes sense <laughs> awesome thank you Hmm. Yeah. So what comes to mind for, for me? Well, it's funny. So I, I, um, I want, want to go back to like the greatest hits actually. So, um, like one, two, four, all is something that actually seems like super relevant. And you know, maybe with 10 people, that doesn't work quite as well. But just the basic architecture of like one, two, and then coming together as a group. Like, so I think the basic question sounds like something about clearing the past. You know, you, you have both the positive aspect of like celebration of success, but you also have like invariably like the, the, need, the need to clear the air on that wasn't cool, man. That thing that, that happened, I'm still carrying some amount of feelings about. So the, the possibility of, of clearing the air, either in, some, either in some form of like explicit feedback exercise. Uh, there's a one feedback exercise. I generally hate feedback, uh, full disclosure. Um, I just think it's... I mean, I like feedback, but I just don't like feedback exercises. Probably for that reason, Carmen, that you mentioned, like they just they feel horrible. So maybe if you could like put an intense amount of shame in the room and then see like, oh, and then we're going to do some feedback. Then in comparison, it could be nice. Um, but one of the things I, uh, one of the feedback exercises I like, basically it encourages people to go into dialogue and then to actually do the reflective work of, okay, I'm going to offer you this thing that I either appreciate um, or that I would like you to change. Ideally, you would do both for everybody in the group. Um, and then the question is from the person I'm giving that feedback to, 
what does that feedback say to me as a giver um, about what, uh, basically just about me, about my values, my priorities, about me as a person. Um, so that rather than just saying, oh, you know, hey, I, you know, I, I love this about you, but just actually, what does that tell me about me, uh, that thing that I love? You know, how, how might I bring a little bit more of that in, into my, my game as well? And on the flip side, you know, the thing that you, that, that you do that irritates me, what, again, what does it say about me so that I'm not putting all of the pressure on you to change or be, uh, do something different? but I'm using you as my mirror to really reflect and go, ah, okay, what is it that's happening there when you do that thing that, that, that does create such a response so that I can also do, do my, my fair share of the work and sort of clearing the air and improving our relationship. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's the, a, at least a way that, a redeemable way. Mm, I, one thing I've done that I, I really enjoy, especially uh, Carmen, when you mentioned that um, scrapbooking as well, is drawing together. Um, you know, it's a very powerful exercise, no matter what, to create an artifact that you guys can then take back with you back into the office. And that, uh, especially as you think about, you know, your, your wishes, hopes, and dreams going forward. So uh, drawing together is a particular liberating structure you just used five symbols, a circle being the symbol for some form of wholeness, a rectangle or square for uh, some form of support, a triangle for some form of goal, um, a spiral to represent change, and a star person to represent relationships. So to, to like literally like make a tapestry together, um, you know, that is like each person's you know, desire. That could be see something that you could do as a group, that could also be something that you could do spread out over time. Like everybody gets a, you know, gets the opportunity to use a portion of the canvas. You know, whenever, whenever they need to take a take a bit of a break, it's a, however you you can imagine to do that. But drawing together is one of my favorites for that. Um, I also really love the the in, invitation around system two slowing down, and generally speaking, like embodied experience if you're going to do an on-site you know then for sure like man get in a sauna you know do some freaking yoga like 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 get into your bodies in some some specific way that and especially around what might be a challenging experience right you know, like to have done something together as a group that is hard, you know, physically to do as well. And then to have achieved that. As much as I hate like obstacle courses and shit like that, because it seems so contrived, but man, definitely, definitely do the song. Go for that. I don't know. That's what comes up for me. Does anybody have anything else? Oh yeah. Um, cook together, make a meal together, something like this, or like someone makes the first course, a small group like this, someone makes the same course, and someone makes third, the groups, because if you like make the food together, it's really nice. Yeah. There you go. That's a, There's an interesting challenge there as well, which you could make as organized or chaotic as possible. Right? You could give them a, a specific yeah. recipe and then just be like, all right, this is the thing. Or you could say, well, you know, we, we didn't have, we got to eat. What are we going to do? Yeah, well, only certain ingredients. Or you make a challenge, like everything has to be red and green and whatever color for or something like this. Something funny would be nice. Or you can even like take an ingredient away, away and be like, oh, you can't use, uh, I don't know, salt or something. Now you need to think of something else to make it taste amazing. Yeah. Would something like I'm not I've never used it I, I kind of skimmed through it but would um, this simple ethnography be useful in this case in terms of understanding behaviours and maybe some dynamics that may be at a at a whack would it be useful? I'm not sure if it's the right kind of liberating structure or not. So it's it's actually a really interesting suggestion. Simple ethnography is one of these liberating structures that kind of gets put on the wayside 
So simple ethnography is just like it sounds, so to speak. You just invite people to take note of their observations, only observations. So if you think about the stack of information that is what, so what, now what, like visibly, you know, observable data, only document the observable data and avoid adding any types of inference or meaning or interpretation of that data. In this context, that could be a, a very fun exercise to sort of um, invite a, a person or two people into that observer, uh, that ethnographer role over the course of the day and just like get the you know, do a debrief on that at the end of the day or something along those lines so that there's continuously some form of metacognition where a portion of the group that was nice is this could this could pull out those two people that makes one, two, four, all then work really crisply. Like you could have two ethnographers all the time and then one, two, four, all stacks up real well. Um, but yeah, the whole point behind simple ethnography is just to document what you see here and notice in terms of the group dynamic, the actual behaviors of what's going on, and then to import that information typically into some form of debrief to feed it back into the group so that like, hey, these were the things that we saw and that we noticed. It's, it's also a really interesting way of making things sort of tangible and real. So cool. Very interesting suggestion, I'd say. Well, that's the, um, any, anybody else? Otherwise we can invite Nicole back. And, yeah, one once and twice. Last chance for a moment. Nicole, tell us, what do you take away? Oh, first and foremost, thanks for this rich uh, thinking together and thinking out loud. Um, thank you. Um, and I take away um, many interesting ways of, of um, how to uh, go about, especially I take away um, the drawing together or have some sort of an artifact um, in, in terms of using that in terms of how to go forward. That was very interesting for me. Um, and also um, the simple ethnography twist I really enjoyed because it puts people into the driver's seat um, also for this day. Um, thank you for that. Um, and um, I won't mention all of the ideas. I have taken notes and that's a, 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 like almost a DNA four page of notes. Um, so uh, uh, I just want to say thank you for, for that rich thinking together. Um, yeah, and also embodiment stuff. Um, I, I will definitely do. <laughs> Yeah. I was talking to somebody the other day who they said they went to a training and they said every day the first thing they did to kick off the day for the training was dance like a three song dance party which I think is just like yes that's so much better than like all right I mean I like I love, I love talkie circles as much as the next facilitator but you know and, um, get into the body and cool well, gang, um, that was, we've got 12 minutes left on the docket. I, I'm inclined to lean into, you know, whenever it's over, it's over. This has been the Wise Crowds design call. Thanks everybody for your time, attention, and energy and offering some value to one another. This is, this is how we, this is, this is my answer to that first question of what, what signs or what projects give me hope uh, that things are transforming is our ability to express care together. So, my name's Jeremy. Thanks for hanging out. We do this thing every Monday at four o'clock Central European time. So come hang out. That's it. Thanks, everyone. Thank nice. you, guys. Very nice. Oh, Derek, if you want to send me your email, I will send you that invite into the Liberating Structures Slack uh, channel because I couldn't spin up a link either. All right, I'll send you that now. Let me turn off this recording button.